They were dissecting the barrage of attacks that Republicans are using against Kamala Harris. The list is long and the stakes are high, so let's take a look. Well, maybe the worst and most dishonest thing that Kamala Harris has done, and it is a long list, my friends, is that she helped cover up Joe Biden's declining mental capacity for years. We have a very bold and vibrant president in Joe Biden. And in Joe Are you prepared to be commander in chief? Yes, I am, if necessary. But Joe Biden is going to be fine. And I'm not going to engage in that hypothetical because Joe Biden is very much alive and running for re-election. He not is extraordinarily smart. Thinking this is someone who is tireless in terms of working on behalf of the American people. The way that the president's demeanor in that report was characterized could not be more wrong on the facts. Thank God. Our president is in good shape, in good health, and is ready to lead in our second term. I spent a whole lot of time with our president, be it in the Oval Office or the Situation Room and in other places. Resolute desk. And I Let can me ask you in a more complicated way. I think there's a lot of people would say she can't say anything else. She, she couldn't tell if there was a problem. I'm not lying. <laughs> well, you notice she was very careful, not really to address his mental decline at all, but she did say he's smart and she said he's very attentive. And well, what do you think? Let's move on to the next point. Immigration. The borders are. I asked her, uh, the VP today, because she's the most qualified person to do it, to lead our efforts with uh, Mexico and the Northern Triangle and the countries uh, that uh, help, uh, we're going to need help in stemming the movement of uh, so many folks uh, stemming the migration to our southern border. Seems pretty straightforward, but now the Democrats are trying to walk it back and saying she was never the border czar. So which one is it? Kamala Harris was never the border czar. She was never asked to address the situation at the border. We keep hearing the term over and over again, the lies that she was the border czar. Vice President Harris was never the administration's border czar. Well, regardless of whether or not she was the border czar, the Biden-Harris, notice it is the Biden and Harris record on the border, is abysmal. So let's listen to Ted Cruz talk about what actually has been happening at the border under Kamala Harris's watch. We are facing an invasion on our southern border. Not figuratively, a literal invasion. 11.5 million people have crossed our border illegally under Joe Biden. Look around you. This arena holds about 18,000 souls. Now imagine 639 arenas just like this filled to the brim. That is 11.5 million people, larger than all but eight states in the nation. Kamala has allowed 11 and a half, and I've heard higher numbers. President Trump has said upwards of 15 million people have crossed the border. But they're not coming empty-handed. They're bringing fentanyl with them. Check this out. And then when you look at the border, I can't even believe that in the United States of America we would allow this to happen. Eight and a half million illegal immigrants have come to the border. We've had enough fentanyl cross the border last year that would kill every single American. China knows exactly what they're doing when they send it over. Number one cause of death for adults 18 to 45, fentanyl. It really is a shame. America had a drug problem before this all started, and it's only gotten worse under the Biden-Harris administration. And border czar Harris, because quite honestly, I think she was, and even the media admitted she was, is really responsible for this. And it's a great point that the Republicans can use when attacking her in her presidential run. So what comes next? Well, let's talk about the fact that she is even further left than Joe Biden. Let's watch this. You're considered the most liberal United States senator. 
I, I somebody said that, and it actually was Mike Pence on the debate stage. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, well, actually, the nonpartisan GovTrack has rated you as the most liberal senator. You supported the Green New Deal. You supported Medicare for All. You've supported legalizing marijuana. Joe Biden doesn't support those things. Do you think politically she is a more formidable challenger to Donald Trump? I don't think so. I actually think she is a worse candidate with worse ideas. And from a policy perspective, she is left to Joe Biden. And uh, she may be younger. She may be a woman. Maybe that'll attract some, some youth and women um, to, to want to vote. But at the end of the day, if people really look at the policies side by side, she is further to the left than Joe Biden, and she will continue this mass illegal immigration crisis. Remember, she was appointed the border czar by the president, and everything has gotten worse since that time period in 2021, in, in uh, 2021. So I believe that um, we're, we're just going to um, see, I believe that we're just going to see the policies go more and more to the left if she were to replace Joe Biden now or if she were to be elected in November. Well, how about her record as a prosecutor in California? Let's look at that. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congress. Well, I could go on and on. There are a number of other areas, like she, she supported defund the police. But I think what we'll end on on a high note and we'll show some clips of Kamala Harris and her infamous word salads. You need to get to go and need to be able to get where you need to go to do the work and get home. The significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. Well, I think culture is, it, it is a reflection of our moment and our time, right? And and, and present culture is the way we express how we're feeling about the moment. And we should always find times to express how we feel about the moment that is a reflection of joy, because, you know, it comes in the morning. 